Hello, it's me. I'm here in Brooklyn in my backyard in New York, and I'm going to share some of my poems with you. This first poem is called Reliquary. Picking up scraps of food from the floor, floor of my kitchen near the counter where I cook, slicing broccoli, garlic, red onion or carrot, celery or tomato, tiny scraps on the floor. My cat snuffles them up, swallows a few, throws up at the foot of my bed. I have scraps of you, bits that I gnaw off your bones, bones never enough, always hungry. I have short typed messages, phone calls when we are exhausted, half asleep, visits half a weekend long, every few months if I am lucky. If I am lucky, I can feel full. Shards that I chip off with my teeth with a chisel, bite off tiny bits, gather up with my nails, stealing you with the tools at my disposal. Hoard the small pieces, hide them, secret them, keep them in a small box under my bed. Bits of your fingernails, abandoned hairs gathered obsessively, gathered stolen, trying to find flakes of your skin in my bed. I see your eyelash stuck to the inside of my sink. Pick it up, make a wish, blow it away. I store my scraps of you in the box under my pillow, still hungry, never enough. Eat them, gulp, swallow furtively in the dark. Fill the extra space in my belly by eating air. Mix it with your bone chips, skin, tooth fragments. The eyelash settles on my pillow when I'm alone again, in the dark. This poem is called Silk Road. Touching me where I need it most, he calls me silky spinning threads out of his mouth grown by worms. They live and die to make these strings, woven in the night, straw into gold, turning in dizzying circles. His fingers snag, hook into my skin, pull threads that stretch and break. I am lightheaded. I am down in the dirt, woven through with roots. Locked in a room with nothing but a wheel, spinning, dizzy, dissolving through the floorboards. I throw the shuttle, warp and weft. The cloth pours down to the floor. He pulls his hand away, merciless, then strokes me again, over and over, till I scratch him, bite. He pins down my arms, pushing me deep, fitting both of my wrists under one. He knows what I want, when I want it. Spinning threads, that, spinning threads that encase me, he calls me smooth. I am stuck in this small curved space. My fingernails grasp edges, pull him down in the dirt, roll him under the floorboards with me. Smoothed and sanded, silent, liquid, I break the edges and push up. Worm casings crunch under bare feet, brushing dirt from my eyes, pulling straw from my mouth. I weave in the ends, cut the cloth, dye it purple, wrap my bare, chilled skin as he watches me, measuring by eye, stretches out his finger to touch. I'm going to share one more with you. And this poem is called Bird Song. They walk in a line. The nanny leads them in. Four young children. They file into the bathroom. They are dressed in pajamas with feet, white with flowered print. They are silent. She is proud. She bears a satisfied smile squeezing the shoulder of each one in turn as she slowly moves behind them. 
I am sitting on the tile floor or on the edge of the bathtub or in my bedroom. Did she bathe them? Undressing, scrubbing, cupping her hand on foreheads to keep soap out of their eyes. Did she rub their damp hair a little too roughly? Give each one a brief cuddle as she finished? Their faces are alien to me, unfamiliar children, children I must have met before. So young, the smallest one is two years old. They parade before me, stand in a line, look at the floor, except the nanny who looks me in the eye. Mine or his, I wish I knew. I should know about them, remember them, I am unsure. I say, what did you do today? The six-year-old looks up at her, then says, I went to the park. Do you like the park, I say? Yes. What did you do? I did the swings. I am the wealthy lady of the house, the distant, chilly mother. She is the nanny, presenting them to me before bed her accomplishments, her exceptional work. I am impatient to leave. I have important things to do, interesting people to spend time with. Their faces are blurred, smears on a mirror. Their eyes are blue. They are silent. They watch me. They do not want to hug me. His, ours, I wish I could recall. The edges of my memory, a smooth, flat rectangle with sides that are sharp. One could fall off, drop down into a void. We are all uneasy except for her. She wants something from me. She stands behind them, a half smile on her face, her hand on the smallest one's head. I want this to cease, but it persists. I long to leave. Dismiss them, say good night. Burrow down into my own bed where I will find him. He can wipe this scene away. He can clear the fog, the vapor. He will tell me we have no children. He will tell me his truth while he strokes my hair, endeavors to comfort me. When my eyes open, I turn towards his embrace longing to know, but nothing is there, not a crease in the pillows, not a dent in the sheets. Above me, or below me, or outside, faint sounds of laughter, or birdsong. Thanks for listening. See you again soon.